Can you hear me? Yes, it's very clear. Excellent. Can you see yes. my screen? Yes, clearly. Very good. Um, hi, my name is Femi, and uh, today I'm going to be discussing the discovery of a block point quadruple via holographic vector field electron tomography. And here's the outline of my talk. First, I want to discuss an experimental puzzle that we found and then move on to the experimental technique we used to try to solve this puzzle. And then I'll show you the results of that experiment that we performed, and then I'll conclude my talk. So the material that we studied here uh, was actually a, a crystal with uh, uh, a ferromagnet with um, uniaxial anisotropy, and it has S4 crystal symmetry. So it has an anisotropic DMI interaction. So that means that it can stabilize uh, anti-skirmions. So the initial magnetic state of this system is actually shown on the right-hand side here using this uh, DPC real space imaging. And you can see that it is a helical magnetic domain with uh, modulation Q vectors pinned to the 110 and uh, minus 110 crystal axes. Now, what's quite interesting about this material is, as I mentioned before, if you apply some external magnetic field, you can actually drive a transformation into either an elliptical skirmion lattice state or a, a square uh, anti-skirmion lattice state or some mixed state with non-topological bubbles as well. Um, and all of that's uh, now well known, but what was what has not been explained up to this point, and which, which was quite puzzling when I saw it in uh, real space imaging, was the existence of some real space uh, vortex-like structure in the core of all of these different spin textures. So in the non-topological bubbles, anti-skirmions and skirmions, there's this vortex-like structure in the cores. And this structure could either be counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on, uh, well, sort of randomly uh, dispersed throughout the material. So to solve uh, this puzzle, we turn to holographic vector field electron tomography. And this is a well-established technique. And you can see here different examples in the literature um, of it being used to describe, for example, here's some work by my colleague, <clears throat> Toshiaki Tanigaki, who uh, used it to uh, solve the 3D magnetic structure of these uh, magnetic vortices in these stacked ferromagnetic Discs, and then it's recently been used uh, in order to solve the the string-like structure of uh, confined magnetic skirmions in iron germanium nanowires. And so uh, we use this technique. And in order to use this technique, first we need to make the device. So we took our material, this iron nickel palladium phosphate material, and we uh, fabricated in the FIB this nanoplank. And we actually shaped the tip of the nanoplank to be square-like. And we did this because we know that the shape anisotropy of the uh, this square-like tip will actually help to stabilize these uh, room temperature zero field uh, anti-skirmion states. So here you can see uh, it's embedded in a helical background, but we were able to stabilize just a single uh, rectangular anti-skirmion. And so then we uh, take this uh, nanoplank and we put it on our 3D uh, needle, which is mounted in this, um, this 3D holder in a, a one megavolt a holography transmission electron microscope. And then we actually acquire electron holograms as we tilt this sample over 360 degrees. And so the raw data looks like this. We have to tilt over two orthogonal axes in order to reconstruct from these uh, projected images <clears throat> the three-dimensional um, X and Y components of the magnetic vector field. And then from the X and Y components, we can then calculate the Z component using the divergenceless B field condition. So let's move on to the results. So here on the right-hand side, I'm going to actually take you uh, through the XY slices through the material. And you can see that on the top surface, we actually see some skirmion-like contrast. In the bulk, we see an anti-skirmion-like contrast. And on the bottom surface, we see another skirmion-like contrast. And the reason, uh, well, in order for this uh, hybrid topological string uh, to exist, um, actually, there needs to be some block point quadruple in existence. And so you can imagine that uh, as we go from skirmion on the surfaces to anti-skirmion in the bulk, uh, on, from the top surface to the bulk, you can see we have a pair of uh, anti-block points and then a pair of block points below that in order to have this topological transformation from skirmion to anti-skirmion to skirmion. And what's really nice is that uh, these real space measurements actually reveal both the orientation uh, and distribution of this magnetic uh, vector field 
throughout the the magnet, um, but also reveals uh, this decrease in the magnitude uh, or the the amplitude of the magnetic field near the location of the four block points that we saw. And so now we turn to uh, micromagnetic simulations performed uh, in collaboration with uh, my colleague, Dr. Jan Massel. And uh, these micromagnetic simulations revealed that this hybrid topological string using magnetic, uh, uh, using magnetic, um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, using the, the crystal properties that were already reported in the literature, we were able to find that these hi hybrid topological strings are actually the lowest energy non-trivial spin texture within this material. So it's lower energy than the skirmion as well as the anti-skirmion state for a range of ex applied external magnetic fields, including zero field. And actually, for all of the probed externally applied magnetic fields, this hybrid um, string uh, spin texture is actually lower energy than the anti-skirmion spin texture. So this uh, um, this really is, uh, or at least the micromagnetic simulations seem to agree with our experiment, including, for example, this three-dimensional uh, uh, vector field distribution uh, of the magnetic field, which actually matches quite well our experimentally measured uh, vector fields here on the right-hand side. And we also found that these uh, this core of the spin texture of these hybrid strings uh, decreases near the surface uh, with a corresponding increasing of the domain wall width. And this is due to the effect of demagnetization. So you can imagine in 2D, you have this 2D picture of skirmions and anti-skirmions. But when we actually extend this into 3D, you can see that the, um, for example, the spins are torqued along the domain wall uh, towards the surfaces to be Neal type from block type in the bulk. And actually, if we look at the anti-skirmion case, this twisting towards Neal type actually results in a deformation of the domain walls near the block lines. And so this pinching of the domain walls occurs on one surface and along the opposite uh, uh, block lines on the bottom surface. And this pinching of the domain walls results as well in a severe deformation of the domain walls in the bulk, which is highly energetically unfavorable. So we can see now that the introduction of or the stabilization of this block point quadrupole actually helps to decrease the energy of the hybrid string texture relative to the ideal skirmion and anti-skirmion case, because both in the bulk and at the surfaces, there is an energy reduction, even though there is an energy penalty at the locations of the block points themselves. So then we took a look at the uh, simulated um, uh, block uh, block point quadruple, and you can actually see, as I mentioned before, the simulated magnetic field amplitude decreases near the block point locations for all four block points. And we believe that this is now actually a signature that we can use in electron microscopy to really um, try to locate and identify block points in three dimensions. As, we've, uh, as we see on the right-hand side, we measure this decrease in magnetic field amplitude for all four block points in experiment as well. And then finally, let's go back to that initial puzzle we had. Now you can see at both the top and bottom surfaces of these uh, skirmionic spin textures, this is, for example, micromagnetically simulated spin textures, but you can see that in addition to this Neal type uh, skirmion, there's a slight block twist. And because of the shrinking of the core, as I mentioned before, um, what this results in is a vortex-like structure that when you integrate through the thickness, which is what our two-dimensional imaging is actually seeing, you actually have a vortex-like contrast that remains within the core of our anti-skirmion-like spin texture. So this really... Uh, this three-dimensional imaging really helped to solve our puzzle. And this is um, another really important application of this uh, block point quadruple uh, discovery is that we can actually apply an external magnetic field or change the thickness of the device or even change the material. So change the DMI strength, for example, and using those parameters, you can actually tune the thickness average topological number. So this has ramifications, including uh, for the uh, spin texture motion. So of course, there's a Hall motion that uh, can become uh, that can go from skirmionic to anti-skirmionic, or for some, for example, threshold magnetic field, you can actually have a, uh, a zero 
thickness average topological number. And so you can eliminate the Hall motion entirely. Additionally, you can now tune the uh, transport properties such as the topological Hall effect just by using a magnetic field. So now I'll conclude my talk. Uh, I mentioned uh, that we've discovered this block point quadrupole that constitutes these uh, hybrid string, topological string tux, uh, textures. And um, we are able to tune the thickness average uh, topological charge of these spin textures using, for example, a magnetic field or thickness of the device. And with that, I'd like to thank all of my collaborators and ask if there are any questions. I'm happy to take them. Thank you so much.